Sky every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. And suspense. with them torpedoes, the train will be along any minute. Take it easy, Hank. If these ain't fixed just right, the engineer will never fall for the signal to stop. Come on, hurry it up. robberies, brother, and all of them since I became roadmaster. Maybe I should have stuck to being a hogger. You can't blame yourself none, Dan. You've done all you can. Looks like that isn't enough. This section is my responsibility, and I aim to see these killers stopped. Something special in mind? I need help, Buzzer, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I want you to send a message for me. Sure, Dan. Where does the message go? And who to? To Diablo. And the party's name is Annie Oakley. Let's go. Sweet shooting, Annie. Thanks, Lofty. But I gotta keep on practicing. I don't see why. If I could shoot like that, I figure I had all the practice and I needed. If you figured that way, you wouldn't be shooting well very long. It's Tad. Sure, Tag. Got a telegram for Annie. It's from Dan Haywood. He's in trouble. Yeah? With train robbers? He needs our help. Not our help, Tag. You're staying in Diablo. I think Lofty and I can handle this alone. We'll have to ride back into town and pick up our gear, Annie. Right. Oh, let me go with you, Annie. I'm sorry, Tag. Maybe next time. You always say that. You think I was a kid or something. No, Tag, and that's final. Now, you promise to mind and stay in Diablo until Lofty and I get back. Oh, all right. Within a minute, mister. Isn't someone around here in the habit of meeting incoming trains? Well, usually do, yeah. <laughs> Were you on that Dyson that just came in? That's right. <laughs> they come in and out all day. <laughs> Don't usually carry passengers. Well, it did this time. Where's the roadmaster? Dane Haywood, out in the back. Get him. Yeah, sure. Huh? 
I said get him. Yeah. You looking for something, mister? You. You're Dan Haywood, aren't you? That's right. What is it you want? First, you can tell me where the hotel is. Then we'll get things straightened out around here. The hotel's just down the street. Pick my bags over to the hotel. You're talking like a real brass collar, son. Like you own the railroad or something. I do. And I wouldn't be here if I had employees who could take care of things right. Martin Ellison, I should have known it was you. Just like his pa always joking. Old Tom Ellison used to get me going plenty times, buzzer. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look at you, Martin. Well, well, well. You've certainly grown up. Last time I saw you, you were no bigger than a toy train. It has been a long time, Dan. <laughs> what do you think of this boy? Just like his pa? I'm afraid I wasn't joking, Dan. Losing three payrolls inside of two months is no joke. Of course it isn't, Martin. But we can talk about that later after I get you settled out back. Same place your pa used to stay. I'll stay at the hotel, thanks. Suit yourself, son. We can start talking about the robberies right now. Take Martin's bags over to the hotel. Fix him up with a nice room. Sure, Dan. Now, about those robberies. Hi there. Can you tell us where to find Dan Haywood? You Annie Oakley? That's right. Well, Dan's inside. He'll be mighty happy to see you after what just came in on the train. Bad news? Yeah, and it's wearing a brass collar. Oh. <laughs> What's a brass collar, Annie? A brass collar is a big shot, Lofty, a railroad executive. <laughs> Come on. Nothing could be done, Martin. The men are always masked. They strike fast and disappear faster. Excuses aren't going to bring back those payrolls, Dan. I know that. And they're not going to bring back the engineer that was killed, either. Have you got a replacement for him yet? No. The job's not very popular nowadays. Won't be until after these robberies are cleared up. You've got a gold train scheduled out in two days. Who's going to throttle it? Kind of figured I would. You? Well, I don't know why not. I've been a hogger for over 30 years. When I got this job of roadmaster, I didn't lose any of the old know-how about the kettle. I came out to see that the train gets through, Dan. I'll be on it with you. I want results this time. No more excuses. That's why I've sent for help. Men who can stand up to danger don't need help. I'm afraid you've been railroading too long, Dan. Looks like this job needs a younger man. Meaning that you aim to pull the pin on me? I do just what serves the interests of the railroad, Dan. Nothing more, nothing less. You'll have to take a lot less if you expect to find a better man than Dan Haywood, mister. Annie. Hello, Dan. Lofty. How are you, Dan? <laughs> These are the folks I sent for to help in the robberies. Annie Oakley, Lofty Craig, Martin Ellison. How, are you? How do you do? You mean you expect a girl to help? This girl's special, mister. She is for certain, you'll see. I see one thing, Dan, that I should have come out here months ago. You're getting too old to use good judgment. It was the judgment of men like Dan and your father that built this railroad, Mr. Ellison. Times have changed, Miss Oakley. Progress is the word now. Ideas have changed. Meaning all rails are a little rusty, eh, hey, Martin? Business is business, Dan. I have the company to think of. We've lost a lot of money in these robberies. I know, Martin, but... You know Dan's about due for a pension, don't you? Six months more, Annie. I'm aware of that. Pensions were my father's idea, not mine. Everybody's got to pull his weight, you know. Can't run a business on sentiment. You mean you think you're firing Dan with only six months to go for a pension? What I'm thinking is no concern of yours. I go by the book all the way. And I can handle my own affairs. Why, you... Lofty, cool down. Maybe you'd like me to prove what I say, cowboy. Outside. Yeah, maybe I would. Please, no trouble. Haven't we got enough already? This won't be any trouble at all, Dan. Not at all. This might be just what young Mr. Ellison needs. I should warn you, cowboy. I was interstate boxing champion at school. Oh, thanks for telling me. <laughs> I'm real impressed. Hey, Annie. Get him. <laughs> Laugh while they're able, cowboy. Okay, Jim. Oh, I'm gonna hate to do this. Oh, hate to do just what? <laughs> Ouch, your arms make a better fan than your boastful tongue, Mr. Craig. 
Now Chuck cruise the air. Stand still, will ya? I see no point in allowing one of your crew while blows to land. Come on, Lofty. Come on. A big one. You just what? You know, you'll never hurt me one of fly taps. Now do I make myself clear, Mr. Ah, Craig? I got something in my eye. The only thing in your eye was my fist. Let me know when your friend wants another boxing lesson, Miss Oakley. I'll be more than happy to oblige. You don't know it, mister, but it's a good thing you turned around when you did. Tag Oakley. Hi, Dad. Well, hello, young fella. What are you doing here? You promised me you were going to stay in Diablo. I know, but I had my fingers crossed. And besides, I just had to come. Had to come? Why? And he forgot something. Just what did I forget? These handcuffs for the train robbers. You think that even if we catch the three men that have been robbing the trains, we'll be able to hold all of them with one pair of handcuffs? Pretty sad excuse, Dag. Oh, speaking of sad excuses, yours isn't very original. Something in your eye. Oh, so help me, Annie, it's the truth. <laughs> You're kidding. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Just family secrets, Lofty. Family secret, my eye. Oh, how'd you know? <laughs> and as for you, young man, if you want to keep that secret of yours, you'd better toll the mark, or I'll wallop you till you won't be able to sit a saddle. <laughs> okay, Annie, I promise this time, but really and truly, I thought you needed these handcuffs. Well... As long as you're already here, you might as well stay. Gee, thanks. <laughs> OK. Dan, Lofty and I'd like to take a look at that spot where the last holdup took place. You going to be busy in the morning? I sure am, Annie. I sure am. Well, I got to run the engine in from the repair yard. But I can tell you just about where the spot is. The fireman said that it was just north of the 10-mile marker. Well, that's good enough. Gee, Dan, suppose I could tag along with you? Oh, I sure. That's your name, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's where we start, Lofty. Yeah. There's the fired signal torpedoes. But the boys that put them there didn't leave us much of a trail to follow. Now, that wasn't very thoughtful of them, was it? <laughs> Come on. Sound unoriginal, Annie. This looks like the end of the trail. Well, it could be up in these rocks. Let's take a look. You go to the left, and I'll ride around to the right. All right, but I think it's a waste of time. Nobody would be up there except maybe some mountain goats. got the stuff in my eyes. Let me see. Oh, it's alkali. It could be serious. Come on, let's go back to that stream that we just crossed, and I'll wash it out of your eyes. No, Annie, you'll get away. Don't argue with me. You could be blinded. Come on.
let the boy handle this locomotive? Why, there's no harm done, Martin. I thought Tag might enjoy it. Boy, I sure did. <laughs> what you thought could have cost the company a lot of money, Dan. Besides almost killing me. A youngster's got no business in a cab, and you know it. You ruined this suit. Gee, Dan, I'm sorry if I got you in trouble. Don't you worry, Tag. I'm afraid Mr. Ellison has got a very short memory. Meaning what? Just that you had throttle fever pretty bad, too, Martin. When you were about Tag's age, I let you do the very same thing, including turning the blow-off valve. That's before you grew up and let that brass collar go to your head, champ. Hi, Annie. Hi, Lofty. Hello, hey. Tag. Can't you see what he means, Dan? It's progress. Kids aren't kids anymore. I think what I mean is plain enough. They have no place in trying to run a business. Your father didn't figure kids that way, Martin. He knew they were the ones that would have to take over one day. Some of them even inherit the whole business. And when they do, Craig, they run it as they see fit. Or have you some clever suggestions to make? Yeah, I got one. But you wouldn't like it. Dan, I hate to do it. But as soon as I get another roadmaster out here, you're all through. You'll stay on as engineer till then. You mean you're firing him? Yes. What about Dan's pension? That's unfortunate, Miss Oakley. I can't do anything about it. Well, taking out the gold train tomorrow is probably my last trip then. Probably. Are you certain you want to ride with me? Absolutely certain. Someone's got to stop these robberies. Doesn't look like the troops here are making any headway. I'll get my gun and meet you in the morning. Don't shoot yourself, General. You and Lofty find out anything about the train robbers, Annie? Yeah, we almost had one of them, Tag. Well, I got alkali sprayed in my eyes. What happened? A mountain goat took a shot at him. What? <laughs> Seems like my eyes are getting me into a lot of trouble these days. After we got his eyes washed out and went back, the trail had gone cold in the rocks. Maybe tomorrow those boys will warm it up for us. I hope not, Lofty. Oh, please don't worry, Dan. We're going to be on that train with you tomorrow, whether your boss wants us to or not. Sure, Dan. Besides, with Brass Collar Ellison riding along, you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you meant that, Lofty. Gosh, we can't let Dan lose his job. No, we can't, Tag. But you just remember one thing, young man, that you're here on borrowed time. Even if you did think I really and truly needed those handcuffs. <laughs> oh, Tag. <laughs> Find out anything? Yeah, Martin Ellison, Annie Oakley, and that deputy will be riding along. So? So I don't like it. That gal's good with a gun, Hack. Yeah, when that train pulls out, they'll be laying for us. Yeah, when that train pulls out. That's it. That's what? We won't be looking for trouble until after the train pulls out. Well, look, boss, I think that we really Stop shouldn't... Stop thinking. All we got to do is pull that train out ourselves. Lock her up good, Andy. Get her ready to roll. Let's make her move. What is this? Just stand quiet. No one will get hurt. Drop that belt. Grab that throttle and get this kittle moving. Move outside this office and you're dead. Saved my life, Annie. Jumped in front of me and stopped a bullet. That's not going by the book, is it? No. No, it's not. You be all right, Dan? I'll take care of Manny.
it looks like Sierra's gonna have a jail full of train robbers tonight. It sure does. You take them into town and I'll meet you at the junction. All right. Come on. I think there's a brass collar down there that's loosened up just a little. That's sure the truth, Annie. If Dan hadn't pushed me aside, I'd be wearing a brass halo. I'm going back to the company office where I belong. I should have known with Dan on the job, I had nothing to worry about. I was a fool to blame him for the robberies. Thanks, Martin. Hate to see you people leave, but I sure thank you for what you did, Annie. Well, being able to help you is all the thanks we need, Dan. Sure you feel well enough to take this run out, Dan? Turn right. Old rails may be a trifle rusty, but they're still as tough as ever. When you get back, Mr. Ellison, throw that book away, will you? A long way. From now on, I'm going by the one Dad wrote. That includes your boxing style, too? No, sir. That's one book I can't lose by. Say, come to think of it, you might even become a pretty good boxer yourself. You'll take a few lessons. I never had any trouble before. And if it hadn't been for my eye, I still think I could have taken you. Well, I'd be more than happy to give you another chance. You're on. Annie, you don't mind holding my hat and coat, do you? I promise I won't hurt him too much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just knew it couldn't happen twice. Something in my eye. Guess the hand's quicker than the eye, huh, Annie? <laughs> 